Hey guys, MD Prepper here, making a video response to Big City Texas 45's little contest that I heard about and absolutely loved. The contest is if you had $1,000 to start somebody out for prepping. They don't know anything about prepping, they want to start up, how would you guide them? Well, this is going to be kind of long and probably a little bit rambling, but let me go ahead and talk about my standards that I've set for this and the philosophy. I'm going to assume that you live in suburbia, just like a lot of people, most people I'd say, have no prepping woodland skills, anything like that, uh, just getting into it, you know, other just basic stuff around the house. Now, you may have knives, you may have camping gear and all that. I'm not making that assumption. Now, my philosophy for this set and this kit is to get you ready, at least at a basic level, to have a little bit of everything and to start using it. This is not going to solve all your problems for a year or something like that for $1,000, but it's going to cover most of the bases. So you can start using gear, low cost, etc., and get used to things so you know what you need to improve upon, what you need to work on, etc. We all have weaknesses in our kits and for you know our setups. But you need to cover the bases to start with to use things a little so you know what your weaknesses are. Otherwise, you have no idea. Um, let's start with defense. I would start with defense in the firearms category, and I would say this would be very high in the prepping world, at least in my opinion, because it doesn't matter what you have. If you can't defend it, it's worthless. If you have no experience in a firearm, nothing like that, you, you need that. And again, unless you live in a state that doesn't allow you to have firearms and use good stuff, move to another state. First thing I would recommend, 22 rifle, not a shotgun, like a lot of people would say. If you're new to firearms and know nothing about them, again, the philosophy of this, you're rookie, a 12-gauge shotgun is not the first place to start out for you and your family and everything else. And it's more expensive to shoot. The cheapest shotgun's 200 This Mossberg Plinkster is 100 to 120 bucks. I can buy 550 rounds for $20. This should last through the apocalypse fairly well. I can hunt game with it. I can target shoot to get familiar with it and practice with the gun, get the whole family ready. Um, like I said, I can forage with it, shoot whatever I want to with it, or just have fun, get used to firearms, upgrade later. For low cost, this is where it's at. You say, this isn't a very good self-defense tool. Yeah, it is. Um, accurately getting 10 rounds into somebody's center of mass, even if it's just 22, eh, they're probably going to stop. Um, if you're shooting at somebody who's coming up in your yard, your backyard, nobody wants to be shot at with anything. They're not going to stop and say, hey, that guy's just shooting a 22 at me. I'm fine. Let him shoot all he wants. No. Uh, 22 is going to get the job done. You can hit things at range. You can hit things up close. And every single member of the family can use it. So, 100 to $125 or so on the rifle, um, 20 bucks on 550 rounds of basic decent ammo. I'd get two extra mags, 10 rounds each, roughly 15 bucks, an extra 30 there. Spend another 10 to 15 on a cleaning kit and whatnot to keep this thing maintained. That's going to run you 200 or slightly less, 180 to 200 dollars. Nothing wrong there. Next, you need tools. You need basic tools just to use. If you don't have this stuff, you need to pick up some of the basics. I would say, to cover all your bases, you need a larger blade. Cold Steel Bushman, 25 bucks. Um, not the fanciest blade in the world, but you can start batoning, you can start getting comfortable with a larger blade knife and upgrade as you need to. About 25 bucks. Get a standard Mora. Uh, this is the Clipper version, about 15 bucks. Whatever fits your fancy, 10 to 15, maybe 20 bucks for a Mora. Again, smaller woodworking, smaller tasks. Get used to cleaning fish with it or skinning a squirrel, whatever it takes. Just get a blade to get familiar with. The more is going to do the job for the smaller tasks. Uh, also pick up a small multi-tool or a decent one. Uh, you can get a Gerber suspension around there for 30 bucks or so. You need that. If you don't have a multi-tool, you need to get comfortable with one. Get something that's fairly decent uh, without having to spend 100 bucks on it. I'd get a folding saw. I'd probably go ahead and spend the 30 bucks on a Laplander Baco uh, folder because those are great. Um, you can buy something cheap, Coleman, for 10 bucks at the Walmart or sporting goods store. That's going to do your job for wood processing and get you used to it. If you're a camper or a hiker, you know, you may already have that, but if you just like taking walks in the woods, use that saw. Get used to cutting up small pieces of wood for fire and stuff. Take it back home and use it. All your tools, maybe a hundred bucks. They should cover you fairly well. Um, moving on to other important things, other than just having the basic tools, you need water. Um, I'm going to go a little bit on a limb here with my choices on the water, but water is infinitely important. Uh, other than shelter and keeping yourself warm and dry and whatnot, nothing is more important than having water around. The first thing I would go for, believe it or not, assuming you're in suburbia, is a rain barrel. Uh, 100 bucks or so, you can find a little less, 
roughly 55 gallons or so. Set it up wherever. It gets you in good habits. You can actually start watering your garden. Uh, you can start boiling that water to drink it. You can run it through what we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, what little bit of money you save off of that rain barrel in your water cost for watering your garden or what have you, um, spend that extra money on something else. Again, rain barrel, extra backup. You know, if you've got that thing full after a good rain, you've got 55 gallons of water. That's two months worth of water for one person, easy. So good to go there. Again, just starts the habit, good practice, I think. Uh, so that's a bit of a splurge. Again, the next splurge in the water area, you need some way to purify your water. Of course, boiling and all that, we'll get there later, but the best thing's passive. You know, why would I want to sit there and waste fuel that I don't have? I'm living in an apartment or somewhere or in a suburban yard with very little wood. I would go ahead and spend $150 on the Go Berkey kit. A little pricey, it's probably the most expensive thing on the menu here, but you've got a small, packable water filter that will filter thousands of gallons of water. So that'll last you for any kind of survival. And you also get the water bottle, which is good for emergency you know, type use. If you've got a puddle of water out back or something when you're hiking or camping or bugging out, you can fill this thing with dirty water and sip through it and you're good to go. So that covers most of your water needs along with the water, uh, rain barrel overall, other than boiling. So that's 250 bucks, biggest chunk of the kit overall. I just think, go ahead and get the small Berkey, you can hike with it, you can camp with it, you can throw it in your bug out bag in your car, you're good to go. Rain barrel, again, that's more of a philosophical thing. Moving on, uh, we're talking about heat. You need heat, fire, cooking. I would go ahead and get either a sterno stove type setup or one of the little folding stoves that will burn wood or hold the sternos, etc. I've got an old review on that. Or a basic volcano stove, the Swiss volcano stoves. Uh, those are going to run you. 15 bucks, we'll say 20 if you're going to buy extra sternos. So if I'm in an apartment, I can't necessarily burn wood inside the place. That'd be a bad idea, so maybe the sternos is a better idea. you got to have something for emergency fire. Buy some cigarette lighters, bunch of them, pack, maybe 5 bucks. Get yourself fire steel for about $10. Get used to using it, even if you don't use them much. And probably as a backup, I get one of those little small Esbit pocket stoves uh, just for ultra emergencies. All that's going to only run you probably about 40 bucks or so, maybe 50 Uh Moving on. Uh, you need medical and hygiene type items. Uh, you don't need to spend a fortune on these to start with. You just got to start prepping. I'd get a decent first aid kit. You saw that do all um, get prepared kit I had from a while back, which I thought was an excellent starter, 15, 20 bucks. If there's any medications, Benadryl, highly recommend that. If you have headaches, Tylenol or arthritis, naproxen, whatever, go to Walmart, buy a few extra bottles in reserve. If you start breaking that bottle, go buy another one. Those run you four dollars a bottle or so. Get four or five bottles of, you know, one of each of whichever type you need. So have a few in reserve. Uh, any kind of medications you need, you know, blood pressure meds and all that, obviously you probably need a month supply of those, but hopefully those are on the Walmart $4 list as well. Uh, get a little, little bit extra toilet paper, get some paper towels, uh, whatever. I would also recommend a small bottle of multivitamins just in case. You know, they don't go bad. You should be taking one anyway. Just have an extra bottle in reserve. Medical kit to start off with, I'd probably only spend about 50 bucks. You don't need too much. Um, whatever you want to do. So, moving along with our price point here, I have the other category, accessories, etc. Um, this is for whatever else may be lacking in your kit. Uh, if you live in Maine, I expect you already have heavy coats for the winter and boots, etc. In South Carolina, we don't need that kind of stuff. You know, Maybe you need to buy a wool blanket here in South Carolina in case the power goes out. If I live in Mississippi, probably don't need the heavy coat. Maybe I need some extra bug spray, something like that. Maybe mosquito netting. I don't know. Um, extra socks, extra pair of boots or shoes. Uh, just any number of things. So what, I put $100 into that. You know, just other things to stack away, keep back, You know, other than your basic tools here. That's going to do the job. Um, again, that can be smaller or larger depending on your personal needs. But uh, it's whatever you need and want, obviously. So you got to think about that for your region. So it's more regional. And finally, we got food. Now, a lot of people tell you beans and rice. No, absolutely not a perfect way to start. Uh, take some skill to cook the rice and the beans and everything else. What I would say is buy what you eat. Start somewhere. Have extras of the standard stuff you eat. You've already got plenty of food inside your house um, to start with, hopefully, unless you're a college student, in which case you've already got ramen noodles. Um, I've got $260 left over for the food category, and i got a bunch of stuff out here to use and talk about. Ranch-style beans, again, 
instead of cooking beans, again, better to have something canned around until you get used to the prepping lifestyle and making your own beans and rice. If you like rice, that's fine. If you don't like rice, why would you stockpile 200 pounds of it? That's crazy. These instant mashed potatoes, boil your water, mix it in, you're good to go. Some canned meats, whatever you like, peanut butter, uh, spaghetti, you know, here's my stand-in for rice. Uh, whatever you want, uh, spend 260 bucks, buy some plastic uh, utensils if you need to, maybe some extra bottle of cooking oil, and spend the rest on food. Just whatever you have, just to start rotating. Uh, stuff that obviously lasts, I wouldn't spend it all on pork chops and <laughs> eggs and milk, obviously. Do it on stuff that's going to last. Spaghetti's not going anywhere, nothing on this table is going anywhere, but chances are everybody watching this video will eat at least two or three things on this table fairly regularly. You know, get some canned pasta sauce or some jars of it, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Uh, at the $260 left over we have for food, which I think is a gracious plenty, at $4 per day, that's 65 days worth of food for one person. That's a ton of food. You say $4 isn't a lot. It is if you're cooking at home, you know, peanut butter, some treat, um, can of this is 400 something calories for 80 something cents. Spaghetti, rice, what have you. Um, so any of your cooking food type issues, you know, extra salt, seasonings, you got to get used to using this stuff, guys. And one little splurge I would throw into the food set, which I didn't bring from downstairs, I would probably, if we're going to go the rice route, invest in a rice cooker. You say, well, when the power's out, that's not going to be worth a darn. Well, of course not. But if you're not used to eating rice, if you're not used to seasoning it the way you like it and doing what you want to do, it's not going to do that much good. You're going to screw it up and waste fuel and everything else. So get yourself a rice cooker. Get used to eating rice. Rice is good for you. I eat rice three, four nights a week along with other foods. It's a good side for me. Again, I get in the use of it. Uh, various styles of rice, but still, I've got it there. It's quick and easy. I can play with it. You know, it's cheap. If I screw up the recipe and what I want to do with it, hey, I can always do something else. So that's 10, 15 bucks for a cheap one at Walmart. So rice cooker, I'll be doing a vid on the future, but anyway, uh, I've rambled on enough. That's a nice little accessory to get you started. Like I said, this doesn't cover everything, but it covers a lot. For a thousand dollars, you need to cover your bases. You know, the cold steel Bushman is not some of my finer blades, you know. Um, who cares? It's good enough. My Mossberg Plinkster, certainly not my best firearm, but it's a start. You've got to get started with prepping. You got to. If somebody's starting out prepping, start them out. Don't tell them to spend 75% of their money on an AR-15. That's crazy. Uh, just get the basics. Get used to it. Um, do what you got to do to get in the habit. With the food set, one last thing I would say, buy yourself some seeds. Buy some snap beans or some tomatoes or some cucumbers or zucchini or squash. Whatever you can do wherever you're at. If it's just an herb garden, get used to growing some things. Seed packets are cheap. Um, you can grow an entire summer's uh, worth of squash for pennies uh, per squash. Try that. Start it out. You know, Get to learn that. A lot of people don't have gardening skills. Just because you can grow squash doesn't mean grow everything else, but heck, it's something. Supplement your income, keep costs down, and what will cost you, what little savings you have from that, use it for something else. Uh, use that for more prepping gear and more jars of peanut butter or whatever. So anyway, a shout out to Big City Texas 45. Love to make this video. Put a lot of thought into it, I think. Um, check out his channel. He's just starting up. Highly recommend it. Seems like a real nice guy. We've talked a few times. Anyway, MD Prepper out.